Greetings, sir. I guess this is the way to enter Toulouse. It is, clever boy, and it will cost you no less than one copper to pass this gate. I am a humble traveller. I do not have any money. Then I can't do anything for you. Keep your path away and forget Toulouse. But I absolutely need to enter Toulouse. I doubt you can venture to trample all over me and enter this town. Stop bothering me or you will be sorry for it. What are you looking at, my boy? Any trouble? <laughs> Nothing, sir. Believe my indignation, my lord. I feel highly concerned by your request. May God castigate the rebel gypsy boy who dared to steal your sword. The regret is all mine, but I don't sell any swords at the moment, and I would need, at the best, a few weeks to make a new one. Ah, oh, it is absolutely inconceivable. I have been in 15 mortal battles to fight for our faith, and I campaigned more often than any other Christian man of my rank. I just cannot imagine entering this town unarmed like a peasant. It would be such a dishonor to my descendants. All my respects, my lord. I imagine you and I are facing the same misfortune. You miss a sword, a noble instrument of war, and I am lacking for a penny which is war's foolish sinew. I would do my best to help you, my lord. Ha! Huh. What in the world can you do for me, boy, unless you can produce swords out of your mouth as easily as words? For a sword I would gladly give more than a penny, boy. My lord? Go away, little peasant, and stop inconveniencing this valiant knight. Hello, sir. What a wonderful and flagrant display you have here. This is meant to please you best, wise traveller. Would you like to ornament your travels with the best essence from Jaffa or Damas? This noble knight seems to be in trouble. <laughs> that weapon-bearing kind has no notion of real virtues. To act as a gallant man, rather than a sword, I would wear mm, a bit of lavender. <laughs> anyway, I can't see how he could get what he needs. Swords don't usually grow on trees like <laughs> roses and shiraz. <laughs> The guard won't let me pass through the gate if I don't pay the entrance tax. Is it possible to enter Toulouse through a cheaper door? Unfortunately, sir, there's a single price. By the way, if I were you, I wouldn't pick on this single-minded watchdog. You'd be wiser to modify your route. I am looking for a man so-called Bernard, who is supposed to live in Toulouse. I am sorry, sir. I don't know anyone of this name in Toulouse. Do you know someone named Petrus? No, I've never heard this name before. Good morning, fine lady. I'm delighted to meet you. My name is Simon of Longcroix. Glad to hear about your delight, young boy. But I do hope my purchases of today earn me delighted men of a different kind. <laughs> Have you seen this fair knight over there? 
Someone stole his most faithful companion. In my opinion, this lord from Spain bears all the appearances of naked men. I do not mean to offend you, fine lady, far from my mind, but I would be so grateful if you could distract the grumpy guard over there for a moment while I try to enter the town. What do I hear? How dare you? What allows you to believe I would do that for you? Fine lady, would you accept this silk purse as a humble gift? A modest reward for your services. How embarrassing! What exactly do you want me to do? Go and talk to the guard. I rely on your charms to destruct this vulnerable man. I will take care of what follows. Agreed. I am ready to help you, young man. But pray, do not be mistaken about my nature. I am a woman of a high virtue. But, sir, I insist, I have to get in, at any price. You stupid little brat! My lord, would you accept this humble sword, owned by a dreamy fellow? Oh, by all the great lords of Spain! Let us go, little fellow. The charms of Toulouse are awaiting us. Here's a copper to pay your passage. And take this Spanish coin. You deserved it. I am going to enter through another door. What do you want? Good morning, sir. I am looking for a man named Bernard. Do you know him? I don't know anyone of that name. Go away, stranger. Don't you know that the circulation in town is limited today? You should come back another day. I resent restraining your personal rights for circulation, but a superior political body to which your rights mean little more than a flea means to the dog was very clear on that point. No one shall pass. Now move along before I get mean.
you seen what the time it is, stranger? Do leave honest people alone. Stop right there, young lad. No one may pass until the guest of Raymond VI has arrived. Order of the court. Good morning, old man. What's good about it, you stupid fool? I didn't mean to offend you. So, don't give me your contemptuous good morning, as though I were some kind of raggy bum. What are you, then? I am the greatest fortune teller in the world. Give me a coin, and I'll trade it for advice. You look like someone who could use some advice. Could you tell me... Nay, not so fast. A coin for a word. You'll get my silence and my contempt for free. Sir? Guess what? Who are you? What, what are you doing here? Don't you know you ought to be indoors today? The guards are nervous. The Count's having important guests tonight and he doesn't want to take any risks about their safety. Why are you looking so busy if you're not expecting any client this morning? The Count ordered a cake from me. A very special Saracenic recipe. I'm nervous because I'm making it for the first time. The reception is tonight. I, I don't even have time to look for a proper garment to wear. What's so special about this reception? It's all because of the Cathars. The church is getting nervous. I heard that some heretics have been burnt alive in Bézier. Oh dear God, why are your creatures so full of hatred? I'm looking for a certain Bernard. I've been told that he used to sell fabrics on this market. The name sounds familiar. A very lonely soul. Extremely rich, though. He had a brother. A weird family. I'm looking for a man named Petrus. Unknown to me. Hello, friend. How can I be of any help to you? Maybe you knew a certain Bernard. He was selling fabrics on the market a few years ago. Oh, yes. A skilled trader, very cunning. But you won't find him easily. He changed his name when his brother left for Bézier more than eight years ago. Very few people know that he's still living at all. I may be the only one who knows where he lives. Will you tell me? In these modern times, information is power. Why should I tell you if you're not a client of mine? How much do these cost? Five silvers for the ceremonial dress, three for the hunting clothes. Do you have some money? I think the caterer is looking for some garment to wear at the ceremony. Then he will pay for it. Would you know about someone named Petrus? Not that I remember. What do you think is going to happen at this reception? I know that Pierre de Castelnau, the papal legate, is intending to give one last try to bring back that foolish 
pretentious Raymond to a righter state of mind. May the holy man succeed. Those heretics, those pagan pigs, they do deserve the bonfires they roast on. I saw a beautiful ceremonial dress at the tailor's shop. I know, but as long as I won't be paid for the cake, I won't have a penny. Oh, what do you want, young man? I don't have much time. The place is deserted, but everyone seems in a hurry. What's happening? Oh, the reception is turning the town upside down. The court asked me to make a special pair of shoes marked with the coat of arms of Narbonne. Uh, one of the guests is a noble lady from that town. I am lacking a silk ribbon to finish the blasted shoes. The count will kill me. Oh, uh, the man running the next shop is a silk worker, all right, but he hates me. He's much too happy to see me in trouble to sell me anything. Would you perhaps care to help me? Everyone seems to be dreading this reception. Oh, I have to admit, this party bears some strange and uh, desperate overtones. I am looking for a fabric trader who used to work here. His name is Bernard. Oh, you must be talking about Bernard Paquin, a stern person, akin to those Cathars, if I remember well. I know not where he may be by now. Would you know anyone named Petrus by any chance? Oh, no, for sure. The caterer is a good man. Oh, he certainly is. The tailor could help me, but he wants money. No, oh, such is the fellow. Good morning. Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? What do you know about the reception? I don't really care about those counts, princes and kings. The communal leaders have already pledged their obedience to the king. They say Philip is a man of honour. He will keep his word, and Raymond will not dare to go against the privileges he has granted us. In both cases, many people will die in the name of God. Poor fools. There was a trader named Bernard on the markets a few years ago. Do you know something about him? No. I myself arrived only two years ago. I am looking for a man named Petrus. I don't know anyone of that name. I saw the shoemaker. Did you know that he desperately needed some silk ribbon? I don't want to know anything about that snake-tongued creature. What's the quarrel between you and the silk worker about? Well, there's a rumour going around town that he used to be a slave. I know not why, but he seems to believe that I spread the word, which is absolutely wrong. It's a stupid situation. I have a brother who's a judge. Uh, he told me that, according to the laws of Toulouse, a slave who has settled in town and opened a shop is not only considered free, but also protected from any attempt by his former masters. So, you see, whatever he was before, he is as free as you and me, and he ought to be proud of it. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm the money changer in this market, young man. If you've got some currency, trading goods, or any kind of wealth, I would be immensely glad to bring you my help. Did you know a certain Bernard who worked here? 
a long time ago. Yes, I suppose you're talking about that dark fellow who was always complaining about the lack of morality and the perversity of mankind. Not very entertaining, but quite a skillful merchant. He disappeared many years ago. I believe he left town. I am looking for a certain Petrus. I don't know anyone answering that name. The caterer has tried to help me, but he seems very busy. I heard he's working on an important order. You'd be wise not to waste it. The shoemaker is trying to finish a pair of shoes for the party. For a lady from Narbonne, am I mistaken? I suspected there was some quarrel between the silk worker and the shoemaker. The silk worker used to be a slave. Slaves are naturally prone to complaining and quarrelling. Is the money changer honest? Honest he is, because he can't afford not to be. But he's a tricky fellow. Do you think this money changer could help me? Oh, only if you had something to change. Would you exchange this coin for me? I think it's gold. <laughs> you mean gilded. It's worthless. Did a Spaniard give you that? No wonder. Nothing but robbers, all of them. But I desperately need some money. Sorry, my child. Credit in this trade of mine is a fatal habit. But look here. I know this little riddle. Let's see how you can handle it. If you answer it right, I'll exchange your coin for three silver coins. I couldn't get any poorer. I'll give it a try. Look, here is a pair of scales, and these are eight cloth bags. Each bag contains three silver coins, except for one, which contains only two. Tell me which is the lightest in no more than two weighings. You can try it for yourself. That was your first weighing. Now, choose the bags for your second weighing. You've done your last weighing. Do you think you could show me the bag you're looking for? Congratulations, you found it. You're quite a smart young man. The bag is yours. Sir, there's only two coins in this bag. You mentioned three coins for the Spanish gilded coin. Uh, you're less stupid than I thought. Take it. You deserve it. Hmm. Let me see. You're looking for someone and... Well, oh, oh, lad, you're in trouble. Is that all? Very helpful indeed. <coughs> oh, I, I apologise. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. There's very little to work in that field. But you're wasting my time. What are those knives for? For cutting tongues out when they get a little too inquisitive.
This cutler isn't very friendly. Stay out of his business. He's a dangerous fellow. What do you think of the cutler? Oh, he's a viper! What about the cutler? He's but a sneaky man. I don't trust this cutler. I would trust him only for very special services. Yeah, hello young man. What may interest you in this humble shop of mine? Quite an impressive collection you have here. Did you make up all of them or did you buy some? To be honest, I buy quite a lot of them. My dream is to go to Lombardy. The greatest loot makers are there. I could buy some instruments and, and trade them here for a fortune. The problem is that the roads are far from safe. A man travelling with bags of money seldom goes unnoticed. Can you explain to me why everyone seems to dread this reception so much? Well, the situation is far from quiet. The Pope is prompting the King to raise an army against Raymond, whom he accuses of supporting the heretics. I heard from a friend that Pierre of Arago will be present tonight. He's one of our most powerful allies, but Innocent III has no great liking for him. I, I imagine this is the main reason for the security enforcements. Does the name of Bernard ring a bell? He was a fabric trader. Uh, from a long time ago, it could be. Well, I haven't much to do with these traders. Uh, my clients are noblemen and troubadours. The first feed my purse with fine gold, and the second feed my soul with poems. Do you know anyone in town by the name of Petrus? No, but I don't know that many people. I'm getting old and most of my friends have passed away. The shoemaker is a nice person, don't you think? He is a friend. He sometimes comes and listens to me playing some music. Do you like the tailor? He's a, a very selfish man. I, I try to avoid him as much as I can. What a fair lady. Hasn't she something, indeed? Mm, she's my daughter, you know. Mm. I would give so much to have her married. Strangely, no one has proposed to her yet. Moreover, I could provide her with a comfortable dowry if only I were sure to find an honest man. You know, the old man's daughter is looking for a husband, and he told me she'd have a good dowry. Aren't you interested? Getting married is all I ask for. But he will never accept me. The rumor is true. I used to be a slave. I wanted to keep it a secret, but now it's too late. Do you know about the law of emancipation? Of course I do. But do you think the old man will believe me? About your daughter? What about her? Uh, do you have an idea for her husband?
I know the silk worker is in love with your daughter. I respect him, but they say he is a runaway slave. What will I do if his former masters come to have him back or have him killed? There is a law in your town which states that a runaway slave who opens a shop is not only free, but also protected from his former masters. How would you know? You're not even from this town. Who told you? Your friend. The shoemaker told me. One of his brothers is a judge. Then it makes sense. Ah, please tell the boy I will give him my daughter. Thank you, young man. I will give you a present as a reward for your troubles. Take those two coins, I'll know you'll use them well, and take those poems. They are an eclectic picture of our rich and delightful literature. As a matter of fact, I told the old man about that law. You will marry soon. He has invited you for dinner tonight. He knows about the law of emancipation? And he will give me his daughter's hand? I can't believe it! It's wonderful! How can I thank you? Well, you can thank me by thanking the shoemaker. His arguments convinced the old man. I think this deserves a ribbon. That fellow is not that bad after all. Take it. I'll go and thank him myself tonight. Here's your ribbon. I'm sure you'll make the prettiest shoes ever. You were sent by the divine providence. Take those four coins as a token of gratitude. Sir? Ah, providential young man. I just saw the instrument maker. Everything is arranged. I hope you agree to be amongst our guests at our wedding party. Here are five silver coins. Then you can have this garment and your information on top of the bargain. Bernard Packer now calls himself Paul. He lives in that room over there, the one with the green lantern on the main square. Sir? Many thanks for your precious advice. Thanks to you, my beautiful daughter will find the happiness she deserves. The silk worker is a lucky man. I have a nice surprise for you. Lad, you're an angel. I can't pay you back now. But what would you say if I got you into the castle as my assistant? Come and see me again this evening, and I'll let you see more wonders than you ever imagined. Good morning, madam. What do you want? I would like to meet Paul, please. All right. But be careful. I've just cleaned up the house. Then you won't help me? No, I won't. Reconsider your projects. That's the best advice I can give you. You are an idealist. My brother used to think the way you do. See what it led him to. Go back to your mountains. Your old stones won't protect you much longer. Montségur will fall. Do you hear me? Montségur will fall. 
and you will fall with it. <coughs> Maybe. But know that sometimes we rise in our fall. Accept the peace of the consolation. Forget these thoughts of violence. My sacrifice won't be as vain as yours. I won't surrender without fighting. Don't you see that I work for everybody's benefit? Oncoming death is filling your heart with pride and conceit. Let me tell you one thing. In no way can you boast to grasp or comprehend the benefit of those you don't belong with, and whom you call everybody. I have to go, Bernard. Your paraclete is reaching for your hand. Do not prefer the arm of revenge. Ah, oh, it's too late. Much too late. Let it be so. Goodbye, my friend. Good morning, sir. My name is Simon de Longcroix, and... I'm not in the mood to waste so short a time as I've got left. Do get right to the point of your hill-time visit, stranger. I'm coming on the behalf of your friend Amard, the merchant. I met him on the road to Toulouse. Ah, ah, hey, Bard. Good old crony. <laughs> He's still on the blasted road. I always told him he should set up a business in town. But he's as stubborn as he's hard-working. He'll never change. <laughs> I'm looking for a man called Petrus. Petrus? Yeah, Petrus. This name uh, yeah, sounds familiar to me. Uh, no, no, I don't remember who he could be. It doesn't matter. Thank you for your help anyway. Sir, maybe you could do me a favour. Uh, uh, a request of the highest importance. Certainly. I am in, in debt with someone, and I would like to pay him off before passing away. The problem is, is that all I've got is a letter of credit from a rich Lombard family, and I really don't know anyone in Toulouse who could be interested in endorsing this letter. If you could find a solvent person who would endorse this document, I would be infinitely grateful. <laughs> Actually, I met the instrument maker on the market this morning, and I think he might be very interested in having your letter of credit. Indeed, he decided to go to Lombardy shortly to do some business, and worries about travelling with cash on these nowadays unsafe roads. Good. Excellent. Take the letter and do as you said. You obliging man. I'll wait for you. I've got a letter of credit in the name of a rich Lombard family. The merchant Paul is seeking someone who may endorse it. Since you let me know that you have planned to go to Lombardy for business, 
I took the liberty of thinking that this letter could be useful to you and ensure that you travel safely to your destination. What a clever idea! Give me the letter to endorse. I'll give you the money straight away. Here's the money you are expecting. What money? I don't understand. I'm here on Paul's behalf. He asked me to give you this money for a particular deal he told me you knew about. Ah, yes, the money. Fine. Tell him that everything's fine. Madam? It's dreadful. Sir Paul, my dear child, has now found the only rest he deserved. Sir Paul is... Poor soul. I know that where he is now he will find the peace he deserves. Young man, before leaving us, Bernard dictated this note for you, and he asked me to entrust you with this fur coat. God have his soul. Now, please, take this and leave us. The churchmen will be here any moment. Well, do believe in my compassion, madam. My friend, thank you again for the garment. Don't forget to come tonight to the ceremony. I am carrying this present to the abbot of St. Cernin on the behalf of Bernard, the trader. The poor man is dying. Oh, I truly understand the nobility of your action, my boy. It's praiseworthy, for sure. I wouldn't mind if you proved as understanding as I am and were extending your generous views a trifle. I suppose you mean that this little contribution might please you? Good, lad. You may pass, but hurry up before I change my mind. Uh, if you want to see the Abbot Arno, take the little door on your left. Uh, the main entrance is closed, for the bells are being tuned. Now, get along with you. And what can I do for you, brother? I have a gift for the abbot. It is a donation left by a rich trader in his will. Well, um, we all like little presents, don't we? Would you please follow me? I must ask you to respect the silence of these walls. Only the birds are allowed to sing here. The little birds. How I love those delicate creatures of God. Mm.
brother, the abbot will receive you now. What expectations accompany you within these walls, my son? Holy Father, please forgive me for disturbing you like this. I come on the behalf of a friend. On his deathbed, he expressed the wish to contribute to the splendor of saint Cernan with a gift. This splendid fur coat! Brother Abbot, Brother Jack has just had another attack. Mm, again? Very well, I'm coming. Uh, wait for me here, young man. Fine! The Holy Church knows how to thank the devout and those who are the messengers of their faith. These small attentions are often the key to heaven. How could I? I'm looking for a certain Petrus. He was a juror at a dispute that took place here last year. Petrus? Yes, and Petrus is one of our number. I'll take you to him right away. <laughs> 